working. Um, hopefully this works now. Uh, so we have some of our teen advisors here with us and some refugee girls from Girl Forward in Chicago. Uh, so just for some background information, uh, if you didn't know, Girl Up is a United Nations Foundation campaign that is working to empower and mobilize American girls to raise awareness and raise funds for the United Nations programs that are working to help reach the world's most difficult to reach adolescent girls. Um, so our teen advisor, Lucy, is joined now by three girls with Girl Forward. Uh, Girl Forward is a nonprofit organization in Chicago. Um, they deal with uh, adolescent refugee girls, and they're providing them with individual mentorship, educational programs, and leadership opportunities. So before we start, why don't we just go around and have everyone introduce yourselves, just say your name, your age, and where you're from. Um, the girls with Girl Forward, why don't you tell us the country where you were born? Uh, so Lucy, why don't we start with you? Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm Lucy Lorman. I'm a teen advisor with Girl Up. I am 18 years old, and I live in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. Okay. Hi. Go ahead, guys. I'm 14. I'm from Nepal. Hi. My name is Demchera. I'm, I'm 19 years old. I'm from Congo. Hi. I'm Tara. I'm 14 years old, and I'm coming back. Nice to meet you guys. Okay, so Lucy is going to be asking some questions, and you guys should, you guys with Girl Forward, you guys should feel free to ask any questions of Lucy, too. Uh, so Lucy, go ahead with your first question. Okay, my first question is to all you girls, you're more than welcome to answer it or not answer it, but um, my first question is, why did you leave your home country? Well, um, I lived in my home country because there was a lot of war and the life wasn't that good. And also, like, our extension was kind of hard. Like, if you don't have money to pay your fees, you can go to school. So, yeah. Um, for me, like, it was hard to live there. It was everything was so expensive. And we didn't have enough money to buy things, like, even if we want, we could not buy, we can afford it. And even for our education, we can afford it. But also, like, we came here to have better life. Um, um, I came here with my family, like, I, I didn't come here, like, right now, but up to other countries, but my parents, since the war started, they knew it wouldn't be good to live there, so we had to move. Okay. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, Lucy, you can go ahead and ask another question. Um, oh, this is a great. I, I like this question. Um, what was the hardest thing for you when you came to America? Well, language <laughs> and culture. <laughs> like, we just really had, we didn't know anything. And, yeah. Yeah. Especially language. Yeah, like when teachers like ask us question, we couldn't get away what she asking for. We just laugh them to their face. <laughs> they, yeah, I don't know. It was really awful. Yeah, <laughs> we don't understand what they're saying and just watching their face, like <laughs> just staring at them. Yeah. Yeah, the language barrier must have been really <laughs> difficult. Yeah. It was like understanding what's going on. I'm like confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what are some of the biggest differences between your life here and your life in your home country? Well, I, like in my country, it was like everything hard. Like for example, like what I say, school, and sometimes they even beat us like. I don't know, like, if though we forget our homework to do it, they have to be that, like, like that way they get kids, I think. <laughs> and, um, and also, like, that way to find food, you have to come ourselves. And sometimes when you don't have, like, your farm, it get, like, harder. Like, some people get died because of food. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's better here. My mom and dad can get a job, but in my country, they don't have a job. They couldn't yeah. get, a, get a job, and, and you cannot afford anything. It's really hard there. Like in here, it's like the culture, the language, the people, everything is different. So it's kind of like hard to get along with everybody and be happy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and my, well, one of my questions, well, one of the last questions I had was, um, if you could say anything to the girls in your home country that have not been able to leave, um, what would what would you say to them? Well, um, the the first thing I would say is um, here, like, is really great and. Like we can get job, we can mm -hmm. get good education, and yeah, we are really happy. Yeah, I would say that too. one of my <laughs> friends. She she's still there. Uh, she she can't come, but I would just say like you should come because it's here is so better, and mm -hmm. you can get good good education. And in my country, if you even if you have good education, you cannot. For anything, you're gonna be like what you wanna be, or doctor, and yeah. so yes, you have lots of opportunities. So I would say, like, even though you might not have electricity or water, like, be thankful that you're there, like, with the people you love, and like, like, you know, being in your country, not missing anything. Uh, it's kind of like hard when you travel to so many countries. And never feel that you're home and go to different schools. It's kind of hard. Wow. Do you guys Thank hope you. that you can return back to your home country? Well, I would like but to visit. Yeah. Like because all my family, like my uncles, my aunties, my cousin, my niece. You know, I would love to go there to visit there, and also visit mostly my grandma. Yeah, like most of my family are here, like I think all of them here, so nobody's there in my country, so I'll just go visit not for to live there, because I know it's not peace there. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say just go visit, not live there. No? Yeah. yeah, just to visit. Yeah. Go ahead, Lucy. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah. What was the most difficult thing you faced when you were a refugee in your home country? Oh, actually, um, I guess I guess that can be interpreted both ways. If you when you came, what's well, kind of like the same question about Ameri the coming to America? Um, here, you well, know, I'll go to the next question because I kind of add. Well, we can kind of phrase it like, what were some of the most difficult things that you faced while you were a refugee? Um, so. Domi, I know you were a refugee for, I think, 15 years, right? So um, kind of reflecting on all the time that you spent in a refugee camp, what were some of the things that were the most difficult for you? Well, like, like if, when we want, like, looking forward, like, we have to, we have to, we have to go get, like, trees, and like we don't, we didn't have we did we don't have like electronics like this like right here for example um like yeah like for example like uh, uh like so like we don't have like those things like that uh, so like refrigerator so like if you want to cook food like we have to go get trees like. Mm -hmm. A place that you have to work like one hour to get there, yeah. so we have to, you know. And sometimes we didn't have shoes to wear, you know. We had to work without shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. But <laughs> I think I didn't experience lots of problem. But I think um, my mom, I had to cook food, and then my mom had to go to uh, work, and and uh, we ha we need a hood. In uh, order to cook food, so yeah. my mom had to go to jungle to get hood, or like yeah, and I was like ready to go to jungle to get hood, but my mom had to go and even she had to go to work and go to jungle for like she had to go get the hood for uh hour, like she had to go all the way and then yeah. 
Yeah, it is so hard for them, but not really for me. <laughs> I feel bad because now I think like my story is better than you guys are. So, like you say something. <laughs> like I like I left my country when I was six, and I went for to Syria for uh, three months, and I went to Jordan, and I stayed there like for four years. That's a long time. And uh, like um, I went to a private school. We lived in a house. It was kind of like good because it was the same culture as my country, and my dad had friends there. He got a good job. Thank you guys. Do you guys have any questions for Lucy right now? If you think of anyone, just feel free to go ahead and ask. Uh, Lucy, go ahead and ask your next question. Okay. Um, is your whole family in America with you? And if not, are you able to keep in touch with your family and friends back in your home country? Well, my whole family is here, so. Um, my, my mom and my brother and sister, they're here, except for my big sister, she's married, she's in, uh, in, uh, in Burundi. And, and my uncle, is, he's here too, but like a lot of my uncles and my aunties, they stayed there. And like if when we want to talk to them, we call them, like ask them how's going on, how's the country is gonna yeah. My like my whole family is in my country and that but my mom's uncle mm -hmm. he's in Texas. Like we call him and he comes to visit. Well, like, we have to call on the phone to, like, see how we're doing in that. We don't know. Yeah, um, one of my friends, she, she's still in the hall, but um, she said she wanted to come. It's, like, horrible, really horrible there. But her parents does not want to come. She's like, I want to come here. I feel better. Good. Um, uh, Domi, you said in your video with the uh, for World Refugee Day, um, you said a little bit about the school conditions in Tanzania, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about what the schools were like there, and if you ever personally had a bad experience when you were at school. Well, um, well like. Our school is di more different than here, and it's kind of hard. Like, if you don't pass class, you have to say that yeah. where that you you were in. If do you fail like two time, you have to say that until you pass that class. So, so like, like if the like when you go to school like with your hair. We, they have to beat us, like because we we came with our hair, so we have yeah. to cut it all the way. Like we have to stay with God and pray. Your hair off for school? Yep, yep. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like like my country. Let's do that too. We, um, you have to cut it, or if you have long hair, you have to braid it up from both sides. Yeah. And you have to wear uniform if you don't, they will just kick out of the school. And for education, it's like you do exam, one exam, if you fail, or you fail it. So you just stay in that class for a year. So then if you fail three times, you will kick out from the school. And homework just like how if you don't do your homework, they will just beat you up. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll beat you up. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty different from school here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Here I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I kind of they would not just do homework because it doesn't even count. So they would just say it doesn't even count. So why would I do homework? So they would just get beat up. <laughs> um, do you, uh, what do you miss about? What do you miss most about your home country? It could be a food, um, yeah, anything. anything specific. Maybe the weather. Maybe festival. 
<laughs> uh, the most I miss is my family, grandpa, um, my grandma, my uncles, my aunties, my cousins. I remember that we used to play together. You know. so, yeah. I would say like just being there, um, singing the national anthem, and seeing like I live in my country, that would be enough. Oh, well, this is from Sophia, um, and her, I guess her mother um, is the daughter of two refugees. And so her question was, um, so it says, my mother is a daughter of two refugees, and she grew up conflicted between her home country heritage and the American culture she grew up in. How do you balance the culture in which you were born and in which you live in now? So um, how do you, do you think it's hard to have both your culture and American culture? Like, do you have problems with your parents because you want to be more, like, American kid? Like, is it hard to have, like, two different cultures? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they have to say, they have to tell us, like, what's where, <laughs> you know? Your parents, your mom? Yeah, like, for example, we, we don't, we don't wear, like, things to up to, up to um, like short, like mm -hmm. they get mad at you know if we do that. So yeah. 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 I ask all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so she was like, no. Mm -hmm. and the first time I came, I don't know. She couldn't let me wear like tight pants. <laughs> no, <laughs> I. <laughs> but now you wear them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> 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 so now they get they can understand me. It was easy the first like year, year. You're like still a kid and you don't have to wear a fashion or something. Yeah. yeah. And now like I was arguing with my parents like, no, this is cold to wear, this is not. Mm -hmm. And like I talked to like a friend of my family, she was like an ex scooter. She was like, Oh my god, you're in here like four years almost, and you're thinking of writing like an American, I was like, no, I didn't think that. <laughs> Did you guys find that it was difficult to make friends when you first came here? Yeah. Yeah. But the first thing I did, like, because there was a lot of people from Burnley, so we, I had to talk to them. But, like, other people, like, for example, from different country or from here, it was difficult for me to talk in English or say hi. <laughs> yeah, people, yeah, I want to see your friends, so it was special <laughs> <laughs> for me. Like, no one lives nearby me, like, who speaks my language, and it was like really hard for me. And uh, yeah, I was just like, whenever they say hi, I'll just go inside my house and say nothing. I was like, when they say hi, I was just standing there saying nothing, <laughs> just watching them. <laughs> no, for me, it was like the worst. Like, there were other American kids in my school, but they were in different classes. I was the only fifth grader. And my whole class were like Spanish kids, Latinos, and even the teacher was Latino. So some, sometimes, like, she would speak to them in Spanish, and I thought she was second speaking to me in Spanish. <laughs> I cried the first day. I went to my parents, like, I don't want to go <laughs> Me too. I feel the same way. And, like no one there speaks their yeah. language, and everyone speaks English. I'll be like, what they're saying? And maybe they're talking about me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> weird. <laughs> um, in your opinion, what do you think American girls take for granted, and what would you, what would your message be to them? Do you guys understand? So take for good. That's like, what are some things that American girls have that like they don't appreciate? Like most American girls go to school and they don't have to worry about people beating them. So they don't like. What are some things that American girls don't realize they are really lucky to have? Oh, okay. Oh, I have one. I think like they they have too much freedom. Like the girls, they can like some families will let them like stay really late at night. Wear whatever you want, like you know, have boyfriends. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and not common in my country. Yeah, like electronics, they have phone and computer. 
left everything in their rooms and they'll just like chat and stuff play, but they're not allowed. So yeah. 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 So my is like some of girls they didn't even want to go to school. You know, like and that's really important thing. Yeah. I, and sometimes they like I feel sorry for them, like not to want to go to school. You know. If so like I don't know. That's what we were saying. For now. Like they disrespect their parents. Yeah. Some, yeah. not all. Like they should be happy that their parents are not bad as are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they're just bad. They're not when bad. They're like, you know, they, they they're not bad. Strict, they're, so you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're not bad. They just try to protect you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but they're all yeah. 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 they yeah. 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 <laughs> like yeah. for now, for example, I'm 19. Yeah. I I cannot see do like what I want. For example, like I want to hang out with my friends, go to movies together. I cannot, you know, do that. My mom said it's <laughs> never allowed to me. <laughs> like yeah. even if I'm 20 or something, it will never be allowed. Yeah, never allowed to date. Nope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just culture thingy. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty different for you, right, Lucy? Yeah, I mean, well, granted, I like I definitely think that even though sometimes my parents tell me no, they do it out of love. But I think, yeah, sometimes I, I think definitely I take things for granted. You know, sometimes I would wake up and, like, not want to go to school and be like, I don't want to go to school, I hate school. But then you realize how lucky you are just to be in school and be allowed to be educated. Um, yeah, I, and definitely, you know, when my parents are like, oh, you have to be home at a certain hour, and I'm just like, no, I want to stay out. So <laughs> I think there's things that I, as an American girl, take for granted, but I'm definitely learning how to appreciate, you know, the things that I've been granted just by living here in America. Yeah. Um, and another question I have is, how do you think organizations such as Girl Up can best help girls and women from your country? So how can we, um, as a group, Girl Up, how do you think we can help girls in your country? It's kind of a tough one. Yeah. Maybe educate them about yeah. 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 what's going on. Education. Yeah. No, like say what's going on in yeah. here and how we're lucky than them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's tough. And how unlucky they are. <laughs> <laughs> what about opportunities that they could like think about when you were there? What were some things that? Like they'd be but free to like, They'd be free from from those like. Up, like the fish are green, yeah, up, and, then, and they be free to go, like to go get like the food and food from even if they're like yeah, fourteen had to go to jungle and get food yeah. and snacks and everything. So I see, I started like I started to go get food when I was like thirteen. So I had like I started working at home when I was like eleven. Like got with my grandpa. My grandparents to farming, like stuff like that. So maybe they could like help programs that make yeah. it easier to like go and do. Yeah, yeah and it, you like you don't have water fountain in your home. Like you just go get yeah. water from far. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We have food like and and food. But sometimes I can like two things in my hands and one in my head was kind of and one more like in my bag was kind of <laughs> funny <laughs> and hard, you know. <laughs> so, Domi, I know you, you said that you just graduated from high school, right? Yeah. Yeah, so how does it feel to be the first person in your family to graduate from high school? And you're going to college, I hear, in the fall. So how do you feel about going to college? I'm so excited, you know. And my, my mom, too, she's so proud of me. 
Do you know what you want to study in college? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think so. Nursing. <laughs> Very nice. Sure. Lucy's going to college too in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going, Gomi? Um, I'm going to Harold Washington. Harold Washington. Harold Washington in Chicago. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Good for you. That's so awesome to be studying nursing. I give you so much credit. <laughs> yeah. I could never do that. <laughs> you just like this from high school, too? Sorry? I do, yes, I just graduated high school. Oh, cool. So what's it going to be? What you, what you, what? <laughs> um, I actually hope to, well, I'm going to study international affairs in college, and I hope to stu uh, become a diplomat or um, someone in the foreign service. Or even, um, I hope to even own, maybe like own my own microfinance bank, because I'm interested in finance and whatnot, so... <laughs> Wow, that's great. Thank you. So, uh, do you guys have any questions for Lucy or even for me? I'm I'm young. I'm 22. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, what college did you go to? Me? Yep. I went to Lehigh University. It's in Pennsylvania. Oh. So you already done in college? Mm hmm I graduated. Wow. You look really young. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I really do. <laughs> um, so I guess that kind of really wraps it all up. We're so happy that you guys were able to join us today. We're sorry for all the yeah. technical issues, and we're sorry for all the people watching that it took a while for us to get up. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. We hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, we're going to keep in touch with you guys because we think what Girl Forward is doing and what Blair is doing, your founder of Girl Forward, is really awesome um, and we're so happy that you guys have that program that has really helped you guys uh, you know make your transition much better into America so we're really happy to chat with you guys thank you thank you so much <laughs> okay it was an honor and I wish you I wish you only the best in your careers and Domi with college congrats it was so nice to talk to you girls Thank you so much. Bye, girls. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. You too.